working systems that we all depend upon so much. Uh, and one of the things that we are very pleased about in this project is that it's resulting in more trees being planted. And that's one of our goals. But another goal is raising awareness of the importance of trees. And that's the main theme of this conference. So over to you, Ian. Thank you, Jen. And thank you um, to everybody coming on today and uh, especially to our, our speakers uh, coming up uh, later. Um, I'm going to start with a presentation and I shall now share my screen with everyone. Yeah. Right. I hope you can all see that. Good, good. Thank you. Uh, like many people, I have a great love of trees. Um, I'm very fortunate that um, I have a fairly large garden. I've counted up, I've got well over 50 trees in the garden, and this is the biggest one. And um, I thought it sort of nicely, it sort of exemplifies what we're about today. It's a, it's a tulip tree. So it has this beautiful flower on the right hand side uh, that looks just like a tulip. Um, and it sort of, uh, sort of feels right to me. In the, in the spring, it's beautifully green, and in the autumn, it turns a, a deep yellow, a butter yellow color. And in the top left-hand corner, you can see our logo for our tree circles, and it's got convergence above it there. And this is very much about um, the convergence, which I'll talk about a little later. Um, but um, the idea first of all, is to get, to get that sort of appreciation going of, of what trees are about. Um, if I just use my pointer, laser pointer. So uh, over the years, I, whenever I see a tree that I really like, um, I take a picture of it. And this one I saw in Crete. And what was so fascinating for me was their little boys were crawling underneath from here. They could go right underneath it and come out of here. So it's quite a, you know, a fascinating tree for me, this one, and it just shows how they have a time frame which is completely outside the sort of human time frame. Um, at least 2,000 years old, this tree, and it could be even older than that. So they really do have um, a sense of deep time about them, which we, which we sometimes lose track of it in our hurly-burly of every day. So they're really nice to think back how many people have actually been near this tree, touched it and eaten the fruits of it. So much so that, you know, this deep time concept is, is really interesting. And this is the, a, a picture of the bristlecone pine in California, which is supposed to be the oldest tree uh, still living. I think there's supposed to be a tiny twig that's still green once a year on this thing, but it's, uh, it's you know, at least 4,000 years old, if not 5,000 years old. It's just stayed there. Um, and I find this little wonderful little haiku. I think that the trees like to talk among themselves and speak of old days. And that one really, really struck me as a very nice concept of what trees are about. Um, and they do go back, you know, this deep time concept. Here's a, a Jinko tree. It's, again, I'm very lucky to have one of these in, in my garden at the moment. Um, the, this genus of tree goes back 200 million years. It's been like this. The same leaf is found in fossil coal, um, uh, exactly the same as today. So this is what deep time is really all about, 200 million years old tree. And in terms of extent, this uh, is a very extraordinary organism. It's one tree root ball um, that spreads out over tens of thousands of trees. Um, uh, and it's, uh, yes, it says there, it's 100 acres from a single root. These aspen trees are all connected together. Uh, and it's interesting to think about how they, how they might sort of work as an intelligence, that they, they, they know how to survive and look after each other, that wonderful connection. Now, that's a sort of nice introduction to 
the glory of trees and the remarkableness about them. Um, there's a wonderful aesthetic about trees, which we all resound with very much. But we now come along to what I'm calling today the three Ds, um, which turns us into a, a very pessimistic mode, I'm afraid. And Jen has asked me from the beginning not to be pessimistic with this. But um, like everything else, sometimes you have, to, you have to go down the curve before you come up again. So the three Ds, we start with one is deforestation. And looking at some of the, the sort of scale of this. Um, it, just between these two years, 2001 and 2015, over a 14 year period, 300 million hectares of tree cover were, were lost in the world. And it's nearly the whole the size of India. Um, that amount of tree cover was lost. And the other thing is that deforestation is actually, you know, if you look at it in terms of carbon, which is very much um, a, a strong theme for today's talk, talk is about the, the carbon impact. Of this uh, about 8% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions can be down to deforestation. Um, so in other words, deforestation is ranked third in CO2 emissions after China and the US. So again, we're getting the scale of what we're involved in. That's the first D. The second D is um, not quite deforestation, but it's degradation. Um, the forests that we have got we're getting, are getting thinner and um, less able to function well. Um, the health declines, and that means they aren't able to support people so well, and they can't support wildlife, and they don't provide the kind of ecosystem services we need of, of clean air and clean water. Again, it's uh, possibly an even bigger problem than deforestation. Six and a half million square miles are at high risk of degradation in the next 10 years. That's, uh, I think it was WWF came up with those numbers. So that's the second D. The third D is something that uh, we sometimes forget, the diseases that are actually happening in the world at the moment amongst the tree populations. The emerald ash diet borer, um, disease, which is obviously a, an insect that goes around um, killing off ash trees. Uh, this is one of the biggest um, diseases in the, of trees at the moment. Um, ash dieback is something we've got rampaging across the UK at the moment. Um, it, it turned up a few years ago, just one isolated incident, but it's now everywhere. I've I literally heard chainsaws in the last couple of weeks around here cutting down ash trees. And Xylella fastidiosa is the, is the disease, the fungal disease of olive trees, and that is absolutely decimating um, the olive crops across Europe at the moment. And part of this problem is, is climate change effects. They're very subtle. They're very sort of slight changes in habitat uh, for some insects can mean a, a huge tipping point actually happens with um, the systems around, where suddenly you haven't got a pest that's keeping disease under control, um, or you have insects and pests moving into areas they weren't there before, and suddenly disease spreads into a virgin territory. So diseases of trees is an extraordinarily important aspect of what we're dealing with. Right, that's positive now. Um, yes, I finished with the negative bits. Is that right, Jen? Thank you. <laughs> Positive. Right. I picked up a couple of things very recently, last couple of days or so in the newspapers. Um, satellite imaging from of the Sahara and other deserts are showing that actually there are a heck of a lot more trees than they first thought. Um, so there are quite a few hundred million more trees in an areas of the world that they never thought had trees in them. So it's not all lost. Trees can really survive in climates and uh, environments we never thought they could. So there we are, a sort of wonderful extra little thing to actually add into this. And another one from uh, Uganda. Um, they're going to be planting a vast number of trees in Uganda, um, figs, to mahogany, and uh, very much to look after the uh, wildlife areas there, and chimpanzees in particular. So that's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of very good news stories around about trees and tree planting. Um, the, the ambitions are uh, amazing and we can only add our strength to theirs. Now in terms of systems, um, 
Yeah, there are lots of messages that come out of looking at trees in terms of systems. Um, and the first one is this one is, uh, I, I think we often don't recognize how much undergroundness there is about a tree. The root structures are often more extensive than the branches above. And what actually is happening underground, completely invisible to us most of the time, is an amazing ecosystem of organisms, bacteria, um, all kinds of things, and, and nutrients being sucked out of the soil. And it's uh, there to sort of balance. So we always have this with, with when we, ever we look at a system, it's much more than the perspective from the outside. Um, to me, this relates very much to uh, the systemic iceberg model that's often used where we only see the top of an iceberg and there's lots of patterns and structures and mental models underneath. So there's a nice resonance there for me with systems thinking around the, the sense of what's visible and what isn't with a tree. Some of the other things that uh, resound with systems thinking of trees is uh, the, the concept that they're, they're part of much larger systems. Trees by themselves um, are fine, but they actually do connect with each other. They, uh, work, they are usually grown in, in uh, woods, uh, forests, or whatever, and they have an extended phenotype. They affect other things. The uh, evolution of birds and insects and other animals have been co-developed with the trees themselves. So the genetic makeup of the tree affects what's around it. And of course, the tree itself is made up of many components, not only just the materials and the, the minerals, etc., but it, they depend themselves on fungi and insects, and even, even birds are essential for trees to thrive. Birds spread seeds, and that's one of the most important things for trees is to disperse themselves. So there's a wonderful connection there. Uh, and if you're looking for examples for systems thinking, trees and forests make up a, 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 a wonderful opportunity to explain these things. And yes, they are, they, they do communicate um, chemically and all sorts of ways. The roots connect, uh, trees can actually send signals of uh, impending invasion of, um, uh, uh, of animals and uh, predators that are actually coming to, into, into a forest to, to live. Um, and we must never forget that the plant life and the animal life on this planet have been at war for, with each other in a sense since the beginning of animals came out, on, uh, out of the sea. There's been this battle and there's always this balance between what's, uh, what, what actually happened. Because let's not forget that many trees produce um, poisons and toxins. Um, and the reason for this is to control the animals. So there's a symbiosis that's going on all the time. Another thing that we get from systems, um, ideas out of trees is the cycles, so the seasons. Um, this is obviously much more prevalent in Northern uh, hemisphere where you know, we, we have winters and summers. Um, it's interesting that other parts of the world, trees tend not to have this seasonality to them. But um, as you can see from the picture in the background here, this is bare trees in, in the middle of winter and occasionally a glorious sunshine behind them. Uh, I say very occasionally. Um, so there were lots of interesting concepts around cycles of trees, which leads us to metaphors. What are the metaphors that trees can give us? And what therefore can we lead into in terms of spiritual support that we can obtain from trees? Um, Hey, specifically in, in trees, let's not forget that uh, there's a whole um, a methodology in systems thinking called soft systems methodology, where the whole idea is to get to what we call a root definition, which is the what, the how, and the why of the system. So we, we are bedding into our, our, our work, the concept of what a tree is about, the root. But we also have other things like the, the network structure of a tree is very important part of systems thinking, the hierarchy that's within that. Um, and again, this, this balance, this war between plants and animals, I think is a very interesting thing that's played out in trees. All right, I'm going to press on very quickly because I've got 
run out of time today is what is a massive response? This idea is essentially that over here we have the emissions from fossil fuel and industry at the moment in this in the world, approximately 37 billion tons of CO2 uh, emitted. And this is the sort of carbon emissions that we need to reduce down to zero. Um, these numbers are 2019. I think 2020 numbers are going to be an aberration. They're going to be very different. Um, I imagine by 2022 we'll be back on track of getting a larger and larger number here. The question is, what would be a massive response in terms of trying to reduce that? Would 1% of those total annual emissions be a massive response? Well, I, I, I've chosen 1% as a way to think about it. So if we can think of something that would reduce that number by 1%, that would be a massive response. And we need 100 massive responses to get to not net zero. So this equates to about 400 million tons per year of carbon reduction. Um, that's quite a tall order. If we were to look at it in terms of um, scales, what we have here is uh, upwards, we have the effect of the intervention. The effect of the invention running from tiny little interventions medium scale ones to really large interventions, really doing something massive scale. And then along this way is the number of interventions you might look at, whether it's just one or two interventions or many, many of them. And you can start to see where there's a sort of a, a band around here where you might be getting into the region of having a massive response. One very large intervention might reduce things by up to 1%. It's more likely, though, that you're going to be somewhere in the sort of medium areas of having a sort of a, a medium impact, but a medium number of interventions doing them. And of course, we can have this down here, many, many interventions, but they're very small themselves. They do add up to a big, massive response. So this sort of begins to feel gave you a little bit of a feel for what, what's required in terms of interventions, so things we can change and do better. Um, when you we now put some numbers into this, um, I'm sorry if, if this is a little bit heavy going, but um, mapping out using a log, log scale graph, we have here the carbon emissions in terms of tons running from one ton up to 10 billion tons. All right, so that's that scale up the in terms of the size of the largeness of the impact we can make. And this way is population. So one person running all the way up to somewhere around here, which is sort of seven and a half billion people on the planet, is the full range of it. And if you were to stick there at seven and a half billion people, every one of us say 4.3 tons of carbon, that would make us net zero. So that's the scale of the issue we're dealing with at the moment. Um, some of the other numbers you can see around here, in terms of total amounts, um, the US with its population um, less than a billion people, um, they need uh, to sort of look, they, they actually produce at the moment 5.4 billion metric tons of carbon. India over here only produces 2.2 billion metric tons, much larger population. But these, this sort of gives you the scale of the problem we're looking at. And over here down in the uh, bottom left-hand corner is the sort of per capita numbers that um, at the moment, the US is producing 16 and a half metric tons per head of population. India, 1.7 metric tons per head and the UK somewhere in the middle at 6.5. So what I've done with this graph here is very quickly drawn a uh, what I call the massive response 1% line. So in other words, if we could get into this box up here with a massive response, one, one thing, magic wand almost, to reduce by about 400 million tonnes, um, that would be 1%. One, 1%. 
On the other hand, if we actually look at, uh, you know, up here in the about 400 million people were each to say one ton, would have the same effect. So that's the kind of line across here, which shows you where we can do different interventions. We get to, to just that 1% change. Trees, what can they do for us? There are 3 trillion trees in the world. Um, at least that's a sort of rough estimate. Um, it could be more than that. Um, what, they are, what the numbers are sort of showing is that we're sort of seeing a net loss of maybe 10 billion trees a year. So that's a significant issue that we have to deal with. And that's happening from all kinds of different reasons, from um, deliberate deforestation, agricultural shifting, forestry, just naturally using the, 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 the forests, the wildfires we have, or urbanization, actually chopping it into the land that we need. So again, we get this sort of feel for what we're up against in terms of trying to prevent the loss of trees. We'll go back to that same graph again, this time placing on it trees. So here we have bottom right hand corner down here. If 400 million people each plant one tree every year, then we'll make a massive response. In other words, we'll hit 1% of the total amount we need to achieve. And that means actually um, that tree is only going to reduce by one ton over a hundred years. So we have to keep planting. Every one of those 400 million people have to keep planting a tree every year from now on for the next hundred years. Um, so if that's okay, let's, let's, uh, let's get on and do it. Uh, we could actually uh, go back up this line a little bit and say maybe something like 1 million people planted an, acre, an eight acre forest every year from now on. We could go right back up here and just have 200 people that they need to plant 100 square miles of forest in every, every year for the next 100 years to do it. So that's the scale of the problem. That's what we're about. And it links very much into work, which is why um, we've got this word convergence in, um, in our logo. Okay, uh, in three minutes, three minutes. Three minutes, okay, thank you. And um, Green Dependent Institute, Social Change and Development and the Schumacher Institute were part of a, a research project. Um, the main concept we were trying to look at was how to shift the world from the way we are now, where we're increasing our resource, resource use and decreasing our equality. We wanted to shift that into a world where we were decreasing our resource use, in other words, working with living within the limits of the planet and increasing our equality at the same time. That's what convergence is about, quite literally converging the world within the limits of the planet. That's what we're about with the Convergence Tree Circle project. Trees for food, fodder and medicines, livelihoods, with a bit of carbon emission reduction thrown in. Because don't forget, every one of those trees that get planted is adding into that massive response world needs. And we have these two wonderful examples of this actually happening, and we're going to be talking about that a lot more next uh, day or so. And uh, we have the tree circles, planting trees in Hungary, and the wonderful tree planting going on in India at the moment. Um, and uh, I, I really want a copy of the, I want, I want a copy of that banner if that's possible. So one day, maybe we'll bring it back from our next trip. It's absolutely superb. There we are, Jen. Is that, uh, is that okay for timing? Marvellous. Spot on, Ian. That's, that's really great. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I think people may have some questions and responses, but uh, our suggestion is that uh, we now do that in groups, discussion groups, uh, so if you can all bear with us for a few moments, uh, I'm going to now uh, put people into breakout rooms and 
there will be a facilitator in each room uh, and there's very general questions about sharing who you are and what your interests are and some you know some thoughts that maybe the presentation has uh, sparked off in you so I'm just going to do some breakout rooms let me see 35 people okay Okay, here we go. You should get a little message. It just takes a little while to put you into the room. Mm. Yes, you you may need to you may need to click a button if you want to join a group. Is it giving you a message? Um, you may need to click the button and then you can join. Okay. I'm in a group with you. Oh, I see. Okay, maybe I'm 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 in this group. Okay. But I think so. Are you? Oh well, no, maybe not. I haven't had a message. Eh? Maybe you haven't clicked the button, Ian. I, 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 I've only got one that tells me I can close all the rooms at the moment. Ah, right. OK, well, you can you can go and join. Well, don't do that. No, I know. <laughs> you can think... join a group uh, by just clicking on the room. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can join a group. Mm. Um, now, that's because I'm the uh, Mr. Mr. Arak Navalu. Mr. Rak, Rak, oh, he, do you want to join a group? Uh, we can't hear what you're saying. Did you did you want to join a group? See if I can send a message. No. Okay, Miss Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ratna Velu. Did you want to join a group? And, and we have Nina as well here. Yeah. Uh Nina. Okay, hang on. Um let me just shut that a minute. And Nina, did you want to join a group? Okay, I will. Oh, I think he's worked he's it out. He's worked it out. Yeah, he's Just... worked it out. And uh, Nina, yeah. did you did you want to join a group? I think I'm still down as host, which is why I haven't. Exactly. Gone. And so, if you click on the breakout rooms, yeah, I can join one. You can join a group. Yeah. Yeah. Which one hasn't got most in it? Many of that. Yeah. That was really good. Thank you, Ian. Is that okay? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, good. wasn't too technical in the. No, no, I think he got it just right, actually. Right, it's a bit daunting though if you think about the scale of what we need to. Work I with. thought uh, I I think a presentation like that would do very well for um the uh, as a one of the resources you know for um the climate toolkit. Right. 
That was a good point, yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the sort of thing that, generic mm. thing that mm. people can use for all sorts of different purposes. Yes, that's an interesting idea. Cool. Yeah, yeah. But but we need to we need we would need to might possibly might need to record it in a better with a better internet connection because you were a little bit yeah I know it's yeah, we, yeah I know it's really tricky isn't it we suffer a bit up here I'm afraid it's, oh you suffer oh. yeah some good days some bad days really yeah, yeah. I, I know I, I yeah mm. yeah I, maybe some people don't want to join a group because um, of language which maybe. is a bit of a shame but there we are. That's life, I'm afraid. Well, I think I'll go and I'll go and pop off into room two. I think you do that then. Okay, yeah. I'm. I may just stay out a bit of this yep. time. Okay. And so, at the moment, I'm trying to find a way of raising awareness and appreciation of trees in our neighbourhood, and I'm sure this this conference will help. So, thank you. And I'd like to pass on my uh, baton, as it were, or microphone to Mary. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Um, I live in um, Buckinghamshire in uh, England um, and I've got sort of two hats really. Um, I'm a green uh, in the Green Party um, and also I'm involved in a very small indeed local project um, where we're looking at um, whether we can plant some trees here and, and the object is about carbon reduction, um, just getting people enthused in our locality. Um, and so um, I'm going to be fascinated by what people say. I, I was already interested in some of the um, uh, kind of aesthetic um, things that Ian was talking about and, and thinking about ways to infuse people in our, in our area with the idea of planting trees, because I think we've all heard quite a lot about it, but we need, we need to find a way of really engaging people so I'm hoping that that's what this afternoon will, will bring. Um, I'm gonna pass on to Janet because she's also in our area. So she might like to just say another thing um, to follow on from me. Hello, I'm Janet and I'm a friend of Mary's. We live in the same area and um, we have similar interests. Um, the new group that Mary mentioned, um, Yes, I, I think we, we're sort of trying to find out areas initially owned by the town council where we can plant trees, but also it's a matter of um, engaging people and also engaging local farmers if we can make any inroad into talking to them about planting trees and hedges as well. So, um, yeah, but we're, we're, we've only recently started, so it's a fairly, fairly new project, but uh, I hope that we can have some success. And I shall pass the baton on to Tara. Thanks, um, thanks, Janet. Hi, I'm Tara. Um, so I just graduated this year and I'm doing um, a bit of research on sort of marine restoration with Ian for, Schumacher Institute, oh sorry, um, and I'm just sort of starting to learn about systems um, thinking and I'm really interested in sort of the grassroots projects um, that are going on and sort of seeing it from that point of view so yeah I'm just sort of here to learn some more, um, really interested in the projects, yeah. And I'll pass on to Veronica. You need to unmute Veronica. Yes, we cannot hear you. Can you unmute yourself, Veronica? Yes, yeah, sorry. So yeah, I'm Veronica Humphrey. And uh, hi, Edina, we met before, maybe you remember. So I'm also from Hungary. <laughs> and uh, actually I got connected to trees pretty much when uh, I went to study in the Netherlands where I studied agroforestry. And uh, that's when I realized that we have these amazing creatures, but we pretty much like them on the farms and I studied agriculture engineering. So ever since I've been wondering why we don't have more trees <laughs> in the landscape. And so uh, I started uh, working uh, at a research institute where I actually study agroforestry systems and I do my PhD. So it's, it's pretty much related to trees, yeah. <laughs> 
that's it shortly. Oh, and I wanted to reflect that I used to live in the UK and there I heard of uh, this uh, movement of uh, transition town. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you probably know about it. I don't know if you're connected to them, but I, I know that they also look for like public spaces where you can plant trees and take care of them. Yes, I do. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't know who's... Uh, Mary, did Mary introduce? Yes. First time? Yes. Is anyone missing who hasn't introduced? Mathilde. I think Mathilde, yes. Yeah, okay, I'm here. Mathilde, I, my, my, <laughs> hello, everyone. My internet is not quite good enough for video, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm, um, yes, so I am based in Bristol. I work as an environmental consultant and I'm also setting up my own uh, business running urban geology walks. I'm, uh, I want to to work in the sort of nature connection field, getting people out in nature and engaging with the, with the natural world. And my background is as a geologist. So, so um, Ian's reference to deep time and all of that was, is very much resonates with me. Um, and the reason that I joined this conference was that I find so much um, solace and inspiration with trees. Um, whenever whenever I, I sort of need to reflect on something or, or, or need a break or anything, then if I go out into a forest and spend some time with trees, that's a, I'm sure to get some wisdom from them. Um, so I just thought it'd be a great way to start the year to join this conference, to just hear about wonderful tree initiatives uh, to give me inspiration and, and hope for the year ahead. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Ian, do you want to, are you joining in? Hi, yeah, yeah. Thank, I thought I'd uh, join the group. Um, so, I, 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 Ian Roddick, um, uh, as, as you guessed from my, my presentation a minute ago, I, I am very fond of trees. Um, and uh, if I can plant some more somewhere in the world, it doesn't matter where they are, I'm very happy to contribute and make that actually happen. But uh, I, I do think that, that we sometimes uh, don't appreciate in our culture how much we depend on, on trees and woods and how much they actually give us. Um, uh, in particular, the, um, the spiritual aspects, I think, are something we should dwell on more. Uh, if anybody's got any uh, examples of magic and trees, I'd be delighted to hear about them as well, because I, I have a slightly side project at the moment looking at magic circles, magic trees. Oh, yeah, sorry, there was another example. Are you interested I didn't, I didn't... in... I didn't quite get it into my presentation, but I only found it today. There's a, there's a tree, for, and for the last 600 years, it's been used as a post box for, for lovers to post messages to each other. So I thought that was actually a wonderful example of, <laughs> of a new use for a tree. It's got a hole in it, and uh, people put a little message in there, and, uh, and their lover comes along and picks it up later. Obviously for some of those assignments that uh, they don't want people to know about. <laughs> 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 yes so uh, Ian I think or maybe some some of you also weren't here at the beginning so we just agreed to have this round of introductions and uh, how we are all connected to trees and I'm really happy to hear about lots of interesting projects uh, you are involved in uh, so I hope you come tomorrow as well because tomorrow afternoon uh, we will be focusing on how we can actually uh, develop these initiatives, how we can connect, uh, what we can do. But uh, even until then, uh, we thought we could have like a round of comments on Ian's presentation or anything that uh, it started in you or in your thinking on it or in your feelings or ideas that you gained. And we are very lucky to have Ian here. So <laughs> I guess if we have some specific questions or something, we can, we can ask him uh, that as well. So I don't really want to start this one because I, I, yeah, I, I'm more familiar uh, with this uh, than you. So is there any one of you who would like to start, who would like to share some, some thoughts or feelings or ideas that you gained? Well, yeah, Veron <laughs> Veronica and then Mary, uh, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, Mary can go first. Ah, okay, Mary. <laughs> Uh, well, I just wanted to say, I like the chart that you did. I like the chart that you did, Ian, with the um, line for the 1% on it. 
Um, so you could see what you could do at a very individual level and what could be done at a bigger level and, and in between. I thought that was a really helpful chart. Thank you. Yes, I, I, it, um, it sort of appeals to me as well because uh, you, you can put it into different contexts. You can use it for, yeah. as we have done today, looking at trees, but uh, it could be any of the uh, initiatives that are happening in the world and uh, it gives you a sense of the the order of magnitude of things um, which I think sometimes we, we do get a bit lost um, and uh, and again it's a bit sobering sometimes that, that what I'm classifying there as a massive response is still only one percent of what's needed to be done um, so a yeah, hundred times this effort is needed sometimes yeah yeah yeah, and uh, in the meanwhile, Peter, welcome to our small group. We just actually had a round of introductions, um, like who is who and how we are related to trees, <laughs> what we want with trees, why we like them. Mm. And now we are having a, a round of comments on, on uh, Ian's presentation. And uh, un uh, until I give the word to Veronica in a minute, uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Peter, so that we know? you like where you are from and why you have come to this seminar? Sure, yeah. Um, okay, um, I, I run a business called uh, Bodyline Fit and um, uh, it, it involves making uh, wooden uh, fitness equipment that you can see behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some made in the UK and uh, then a, a whole load made in, uh, in India. So I'm closely re, um, connected to a charity there called SCAD. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, and and uh, Charles, who's my contact there, brilliant guy, um, has, has just sent me an email to um, uh, make me aware of this event. Um, I've only picked up the email uh, at five past two, <laughs> and it's taken me <laughs> half an hour to find out what it is through. So I've missed your opening I'm uh, sorry to say, so I don't know what the event's about, apart from these trees. And I have an affinity with that because <laughs> I'm using trees for what I'm selling. So my connection with SCAD is not just helping the villagers, but also on top of that, I want to add the uh, further to the 10% to the production costs I already give to SCAD. I want to then sort of uh, invest in trees so we can sort of keep the cycle going, if not adding more than what I take. That's Thank well. You. <laughs> so, Thank you. This is really, really yeah. inspiring. And actually, Charles is here at this event as well, just in a different group. Okay. And uh, <laughs> uh, you, you only missed one presentation. There is going to be two more after this small group discussion. So, okay. so welcome. And tomorrow as well, we have a similar two-hour session. Okay. Now, uh, can I give the word to you, Veronica, to <laughs> get back to the comments? Oh, yeah. Thank you. So I really like the, uh, the system thinking behind the trees, <laughs> how much they uh, yeah, help us in our thinking, if I got the point of Ian. Yeah, that's pretty cool. With the roots and uh, <laughs> even the language yes. trees, if you think about it and stuff. Yeah. And also, I wanted to say when you mentioned magic trees that I seen some documentaries. I don't know if you have seen them, which uh, introduce like really ancient uh, trees in certain communities where they have like really spiritually related. Uh, do you know if you heard of that? I think it was an international documentary. He said, "Oh, if you could find that and, and post that through, that'd be that'd be that'd be great." But um, it, it is a it's, a it's a new little um, sort of thing on the side that I'd started to to look at magic trees. So that that'd be great if you could. Thanks. Uh, it's, it's yeah. All right. The, I will. Yeah. I will think about it, and I try to find. It. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Does does it... yes, Ross. Well, thank you, Ian, for that talk. It was it was very very uh, helpful and. Uh, Gave me a lot of ideas, actually, for an article I'm writing for our residents newsletter. So I might come back to you on that, see if I can get some of your uh, pictures, particularly for okay. that, because um, it's a concern of mine to how to address the lack of appreciation in our neighbourhood for our wonderful trees that we, that we have. Uh, and mm -hmm. I wondered also, what, another, another thing, I wondered if you had any information on how um, we benefit from trees in all sorts of ways, don't we? And 
we have a kind of need for them to be there for, for any apart from anything else for quality of our air and the oxygen that we we use i wondered if there was any information that you knew of about how much we benefit in terms of air quality and oxygen production in terms of trees there's been quite a lot of work on uh, on that area in the literature um and there's a big difference between sort of the value yeah. of urban trees um, in terms of trying to reduce air pollution in cities. I think there's been a lot of work on that, and we've, there's um, certainly in Bristol that's actually happened. Um, so, th um, in terms of the total value of reducing air pollution of trees, right, it, it, it's one of these things that can only be immense. I think that's that's the, 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 the uh, really. In, an aspect of trees we, we forget how much we depend on it to actually clean up um, the, the pollution that we're actually pumping out there. So yeah, there, there, there must be a lot of uh, literature on it, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I shall, I shall look out for some, yeah. We, we may hear something about this. We may actually hear something about this in the next presentation the ecological value of trees, or you can ask the pre presenters there as well, Ross, they might yes. have the data. Mm. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just in terms of uh, cleaning up the, the air I was thinking of, it was also in terms of, you know, the, the photosynthesis and the, uh, the kind of production of oxygen, etc. Yes, um, I think- Through the, through the, get... through the sort of, yeah. process we we, uh, we sometimes in but that's, in that's something I'm, I'm looking into so yeah we, we'll see sometimes in danger of, of sort of hitting the tipping points where um just a little bit more um uh, mm. destruction of forests can actually shift whole ecosystems quite badly and i think that could well be something at a global scale we need to be concerned mm. about that it could actually get us to uh, quite a change in the composition of the atmosphere mm. which would be disastrous Hmm. Right. Good points. Uh, was there anything else uh, um, that you wanted to mention about um, Ian's presentation or any thoughts that you had? I thought there were some lovely pictures of trees. I thought the uh, pictures of <laughs> old trees were absolutely beautiful and it really makes you realized how long they've been there for and and what's happened during their existence it makes yeah i thought they were beautiful pictures you had ian it is quite humbling isn't it a few years yeah yeah oh, Edina? yeah no i just wanted to, to uh, mention a different example and a different um, like positive thing about trees so mary if you wanted to, to uh, say something in relation to this i give the before uh, i talk about mine maybe i'll give the word to you oh thank you I'll, I'll be very quick yes i was just going to ask Ian. he's talking about magic trees but i'm i'm doing a, her a course in herbalism at the moment herbal medicine and I've become very aware of the medicinal qualities of trees, which I didn't really know a lot before about. I mean, I don't know much now, but I wondered if this was an area that you were interested in at all. Um, Sorry, Ian, we cannot hear you. you. You got muted somehow. I'm muted again, right. Sorry, I was just saying, I'm sure we will get um, to hear uh, about that today from what's actually happening in both uh, Hungary oh, and, and oh, India. Right. Um, but yes, I mean, I think the value of um, the, the trees is, 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 is a lot more than just the, the ecosystem services they give us. We, we do derive a lot of food, fodder and medicines from trees. And it's that medicine side that I actually uh, plead a bit of ignorance. I'm not quite sure at all what, what the full range of stuff is that we get from trees other than I do know that aspirin comes from willow trees. So, um, you know, that's one of the most important things for me is taking aspirin. <laughs> yeah, and the, the other thing um, is that I, I realized from listening to uh, some of the sort of uh, more eco farmers that um, having trees around the edge of fields is important for cattle and things because they can 
select what they want to eat. If they've just got grass, it's not really very good, but they need they need the medicine from trees and things when they can self-medicate and and so there's lots of there's lots of interesting things around the medicinal qualities. Yeah. Yeah. And I, actually, what I wanted to say connects to this. It's not the medicinal qualities, but um, roots and even, uh, you know, in, in towns and, and um, cities, there are lots of fruit trees as well planted on, uh, on the street that often no one cares about. And I read a very nice, uh, read uh, about a very nice initiative in the UK actually, that uh, made a catalog of these fruit trees in, in one of the towns and then organized people to collect the fruits and make preserves together and share the preserves uh, because no one was uh, taking care of these trees or, or uh, harvesting the fruits. And the similar initiative uh, started in my own town as well, uh, jointly from the university students. Uh, it's, it, there is an agricultural university here and the local uh, municipal, um, actually waste collection company. <laughs> they started an initiative um, for, uh, for people in my town to harvest these trees or if there were elderly people living in the houses by these trees help uh, collect the tree, uh, the fruits for them and help make preserves together. So I thought this was a really nice initiative of um, taking care of fruit trees in towns and collecting fruits and building the commun community and, and all that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, in my town, this in initiative stopped now, but I'm not sure how the UK one is, is uh, going on at the moment. Um, but it's another nice uh, thing to connect uh, to trees that are just around us, kind of randomly. Yes, it's interesting, there's... Um... Yes, Rose? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ian? Yeah. Sorry, I was only, I was only make a comment you, that... I'm, I don't were... want to... <laughs> I, I was just going to say, um, it's an interesting phenomenon in Bristol, there are a lot of uh, fig trees, fruit trees, um, along the banks of the docks and the rivers. And nobody quite knows why, but until they worked out that it, it dates back to when Bristol was a port and the ships used to come right into the city centre to unload. And they used to come in loaded with figs and they just um, occasionally broke uh, open and they spread naturally. And these fig trees have just grown Hello, along folks. the riverbank. Sorry to interrupt. Um, right. We have to wrap up in a couple of minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's really interesting, Ian, the fig trees in Bristol. Oh. How connected we are. And yes, Ross and then Veronica, is that okay? Because Ross wanted to say something. Well, it's all right, let Veronica go okay. because I've said something already. Okay. Veronica. Yeah, I was. I, yeah, I always wonder when uh, when it's about growing fruit trees in cities or like any kind of edibles, whether isn't it not too uh, polluted? And I haven't really found. Yeah, because of you know the cars passing around, and many people think and they say that oh I wouldn't eat that fruit because you know too many cars pass by and but I haven't really uh, read studies about it. I don't know if any of you knows about this whether if it's healthy to actually eat them. Uh, yeah, this is a very valid point. I guess it depends uh, whether the, these trees are by busy, tree, uh, busy streets or not. But yeah, I, I think it's a valid point, but I, I, I haven't really seen any studies about it. Has, uh, has anyone else? I haven't got any studies about yeah. them, but one thought was that um, we ought to be planting them now so that when we've all converted our cars to electric, the air won't be polluted by fumes and the trees will be able to <laughs> eat, the, eat the trees, eat the uh, fruits on them now. So we need to plant the trees now. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but uh, sorry, it's just connected to this that I also know that when they um, breed or when they choose uh, other trees, just you know, for the look, they also look at how much they can take all this pollution in the cities. 
Mm -hmm. But those are usually not fruit trees because people don't want them to, you know, to make mess and that they say they it's dirty and stuff, but yeah. Thanks. You know, uh, you can actually think of planting um, trees for birds that bear fruits that birds eat. And actually that's what we did in front of our house uh, outside on the street. And I'm really happy to see the birds coming now to, to eat them when, when the weather got colder. I think we will have to soon leave this room. Uh, so thank you for being here with us and look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank Adina. you. Uh, Excellent. Ian, is there any chance that we would be able to get hold of um, your initial talk? Yes, yeah, sure, Peter. I can send it to you. Yeah. And uh, we are recording as well. So. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Will do. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, I think we have everybody back now. Um, I'm sure you had some really great discussions and uh, it would be really nice to hear about them. What I'm going to do is to ask our facilitators to give us a little bit of feedback at some point tomorrow. Um, I think that would be really useful um, to help with the questions that we're going to talk about tomorrow. So tomorrow we have uh, another two hour session and we have an extended sort of workshop session, which is a bit more focused asking how we can become tree or re uh, spread tree consciousness and uh, tree awareness in our own work and in our communities. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to move straight on to the next presentation, which is from Mr. Saravanan. And um, we're very pleased that he could join us from the Gandhi Gram uh, Agriculture Training uh, University in India, where he is a senior scientist and an expert in the social side of tree planting. So, uh, Mr. Saravanan, if you would like to share your screen with us, I believe you've got a presentation. Um, make uh, my share screen able. Uh, well, we well, at the moment we don't have your your um, video isn't on, so we can't see you. Yes, ma'am. My. Uh, our uh, bandwidth is very low. My internet is right. very poor since I'm in from a very local area and I'm not able to share screen and uh, I post see. it. Jen, okay. Jen I've, I have got the presentation. Pro probably, probably. I okay, think Jen okay. Got sorry, the... you've got okay. the presentation. Okay, right. That's great. That's I'll, great. I'll yeah. leave it to you to, to do the presentation then, Ian. Yeah, okay. Let's hold a second, everybody. Charles, sir. Yeah, it's okay. You're, the presentation's on its way. Here it comes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening again to all. And um, as I uh, to introduce myself, I'm Salvanen, working for the benefit of uh, communities through tree planting. Uh, just uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. It's coming, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. I want to uh, give a small glimpse of the forest uh, that is present uh, in India.
see india is gifted by god as far as our forests are concerned we have uh, about 7% of the world biodiversity of flora and fauna and it is one among the 12 mega diversity countries of the earth and uh, our uh, indian land 21.67% accounting for 7.22 lakh square kilometers is covered with the forest area but the per capita forest area is about 10 times lesser than the old average that is we are having only 0.04 hectares per capita and the average productivity of the forest is also very low when compared to the whole average so next slide please can i have can i have the next slide hello i it takes a little while am i audible sir okay thank you yep yeah 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 sorry 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 <laughs> uh, and uh, just to we call uh, the various uh, services rendered by the forest uh, to the human kind uh, i like to highlight that the forest acts as an habitat that is a home or house or abode of uh, so much of uh, flora fauna microorganisms this flora and the fauna by itself it acts as a gene pool to human kind from which the human can have many plants that can help him by providing food and other products and also herbs and also the next important aspect of deforestation is the role of forest as a resource for uh, timber as you all know it acts as a raw material for about 245 different types of uh, uh, companies and also this non timber forest produces which includes all the products other than the wood of a tree and then i just to recall the ecological function of the forest to give a few air a few water reduction in the temperature and also it attracts the rain or it catches the rain for a particular place so to avoid this forest services uh, sustainably uh, for the mankind it has been uh, scientifically delineated that uh, 33.33% of the forest sorry 33.33% of land must be under forest for any country that has to be maintained to have sustained products and services of the forest area to the human kind next slide please sir okay as i already told that we the indians have only 21% of the land area and the forest area but our aim is to have 33.33% of the land and the forest our government of india laid down the national forest policy 1988 so very important policy as far as india is considered uh, through that policy the government enacted many steps through legal measures for conserving the natural forest the conserving of the conventional forest area on one hand and on the other hand to supply the needed products of the forest to the human beings continuously and sustainable so in through that act they deprived the opportunity they aborted they abandoned the harvest of trees for industries any type of industry cannot get their raw material from the conventional forest area so what is the alternative they asked to develop the raw material producing trees through agroforestry and social forestry which i will be explaining later in the non conventional forest areas that is outside the forest areas and also the one important and prime thing that national forest policy 1988 enacted consider people as a part of forest without the people the forest cannot be maintained 
it cannot be preserved it cannot be protected so consider the people who are living inside the forest and on the fringe of the boundary of the forest as a part of forest so to enact this or uh, act the government is planning and implementing many schemes and programs for the maintain conserving the natural forest on one hand and the supply of products on the other hand so next slide please so uh, the next one is our topic is the community needs what are all the needs from trees by the community you please imagine that the uh, indian peoples have a long history long long history so long ago nobody knows how long it go and we have not enough documentation now which is here that uh, we have originated from where and all although we have some glimpses through mohanjadaro and harappa our entire community depend upon the forest and trees from birth to death not only for products not only for the ecological needs like pure air and water soil amelioration and other things as a social as a spiritual as a devotional we all depend on the trees different type of trees and uh, i can explain the social importance one by one uh, next slide please sir. okay now i will have the social value first and the spiritual and devotional point as we all as i had already told that we our civilization is an age old practice the image on the left hand side is a tree called neem have you heard about it i think you have all heard about the neem uh, in asian countries and in other places of uh, tropical areas this neem is a holy tree this holy tree uh, is attached to a goddess called shakti or energy giving goddess each deity or god of uh, hinduism or in india they will be associated with one tree in such a means the goddess called shakti or parvati is meant for giving energy to the entire universe this holy tree is for mentioning our referring to the goddess parvati whatever the puja or spiritual respect given to that particular deity will also be given to this tree see there are a oozing out of latex you can see a small portion a milky portion coming out of the tree species so the people of the around the area started offering uh, spiritual prayers since they think that the latex is oozing out due to angry of the god parvati actually scientifically the latex is oozing out because of the injury to the trees but as far as our people spiritual belief is considered they are thinking that the parvati god is angry so the latex is coming out of the particular tree so they will be offering prayers and all the respect that particular tree as a holy tree and also one thing i want to add is we are also uh, speaking about use of uh, natural chemicals naturally available chemicals instead of artificial chemicals in our food and agriculture and in all means this particular tree i like to call it as a fertilizer company and also a pesticide company it gives so much of fertilizers and the pesticides that can be used in organic agriculture for controlling the pest and also supply of suitable minerals nutrients to the particular plant for the better growth and development the seed is the main part the leaf is a main part the bark is used and every part of the plant is useful to organic agriculture and the community especially this farmers community will be having at least one tree in their farm 
it treats a small tricks is also used for our cleaning our teeth in the morning if they after waking up from the sleep they will they will break a small twig and they will clean their teeth and they will go to such an extent from birth to death this plant occupies a specific portion in the life of uh, human of south india especially the tamil nadu the second image on your right is a banyan tree the long living tree say 300 to 400 or 500 years we have some samples to such an extent it's a very long living tree it has some prop roots to support its long duration and our date is and we will build a small uh, temples under this tree and we will be treating this plant as a holy tree so next slide please okay this is called as a uh, sacred groves what is meant by sacred grove is a holy place and it is a group of trees it may be a few number or it may run into so many hectares situated either inside a forest or outside the forest or within the village or within the agriculture fields this sacred grove are maintained by the ancestor of us to devote itself to a particular deity or god that offers security to the local people one thing so wherever you find the god or goddess when for the security to the villages will have a sacred grove and what are all the tree species that is found over there is it depends upon the local especially the plants that are used as herbs are included in that particular uh, component it may be used when a war occurs between two small kings they can use these herbs to cure their injured soldiers one thing and another one is if it is inside the forest it represents the species composition existing in that particular forest area so if you visit a particular sacred grove you can know what are all the different types of uh, trees and biodiversity is available in the nearby forest just by seeing this sacred grove <coughs> sorry now we can we have counted uh, more than 150000 such sacred groves across india in all the states right from uh, himachal pradesh that is situation in high altitude to tamil nadu the southernmost tip of india every state is be having this sacred grove and it is a part and parcel of the india and we are, everybody should thank our ancestors for forming such a good a grove or an orchard or a wood lot uh, to teach us how important that particular tree to the existence of the human beings in south india and also you can observe that only less than 10000 sacred groves has been studied and documented because they are more than 5 hectares they have more diversity on the we cannot document all the only 50000 sacred groves supposed to be present in india because they are small in size and they have established just now and all they don't have much good history and so we have documented this than 10000 sacred groves and all the persons will respect they won't disturb the trees they won't cut trees they won't do any illegal activity inside the sacred grove because they are afraid that the deity will punish us they will protect this forest and one more thing is i want to add is depending upon the birth time see children will have a different birth times so our ancestors have given a list of 27 birth stars we used to call it sir birth stars each child will depending upon his birth will have one birth star so 
each birth star will be associated with one particular tree it may be a mango tree or it may be an indian gooseberry tree it may be a neem which i explained earlier there are different uh, 27 particular trees will be associated with the 27 birth stars the child will consider the holy tree attached to his uh, birth star as holy he will pray to it he won't cut it and he will try to propagate that particular plant during his birthday and special days and that is one among the very good social character of our uh, south indians uh, to multiply the presence of trees around them so next slide sir and then uh, i can say this uh, recreational value of the particular trees we have group of trees in the uh, parks of picnic spots especially in the altitudes above 1000 meters as we have very undulating undulating land that uh, some lands are below the mean sea level and up to everest which is about 300 meters above mean sea level 13000 meters sorry 13000 meters this type of uh, parks and recreation value will be established in uh, uh, hill zones especially and to some extent in the plains to just to have a pleasing environment and relaxing mood and uh, this type of uh, recreation is given only to trees and not by others so this is the, some highlights i like to uh, mention about the social values and i am from next slide onwards i like to highlight about the community involvement in the promotion of this trees next slide sir thank you and um, as i told you that uh, apart from this uh, social value and the, the ecological needs the human are very fond of their economical returns and their produces so as of the national forest policy 1988 emphasized to produce the community needed products from outside areas other than the conventional forest areas we have formulated and the monies have formulated one top call a grow forestry a grow forestry is nothing but production of food crops or fruit crops rearing animals in the farmers field where the farm is considered to be intensively done and there the trees can be grown the image on your left hand side is a typical agroforestry grown in south india see here the tree with large leaves is called teak actually this particular uh, tree called a teak is called as a paragon timber remains standard for comparing other tree trade timbers in india that is for a long living carbon sequestration etc the another uh, tree with small leaves is called as sisbania which is used as a fodder to animals which is used as a soil ameliorating through symbiosis with the bacteria called uh, rhizobium and also it is a very good food taking once in a week will control our uh, hook worms and other uh, intestine problem causing worms in the human body in the bottom you can see this cotton crop used for producing fiber so this um, i'm crop... i'm sorry to uh, interrupt you just for a moment but uh, yes, you sir. have you have a few more minutes okay yes sir yeah sir yeah ma'am yeah uh, yes, sorry sir uh, on your right hand side you can see a wood lot uh, which is uh, made of cashewina a tree species uh that is used for raw material for industries like paper and pulp 
plywoods and making rayons and all. So the right hand side of trees can pro be produced in farmlands to satisfy the needs of the industry, and the left hand side modern needs are satisfied for the farmers and the local community. So next slide, please. I'll rush up. I'll rush up, ma'am. Okay, uh, this is the various tree programs that we will be promoting through the communities. Uh, the first one is uh, just we have to create an awareness. Everybody knows the importance of the trees. Everybody wants to plant trees. But what technology I already told in the discussion that uh, the tree species that satisfied the need of the local people or the people living in and around the type of land, soil, and the moisture availability, period, etc. We have to select the tree species and we have to plant. Here, we will be trying to plant trees in the premises of uh, large companies and institutions. And we used to call it as an oxygen pot. Our objective is to produce more oxygen. So, we will be selecting our uh, tree species which can give oxygen, more oxygen, slow growing and very long living. Here we have selected this pupil tree, neem, etc. So that they can live more than 5, 50 years, 100 years and they can emit a good oxygen for the surrounding people to have a pure air and also it can cast a very good shape. So that is the one thing we will be keeping it in mind. Before that all, the community of this particular area, for example, the institutions, we have students, we have professors from other uh, sciences not concerned with tree planting. We will be giving a talk or a video show on how the trees should be planted, not only planting, but also how to protect it, how to irrigate, what are the different types of uh, action that we have to take. And one important thing is, as far as uh, we are concerned, the people of uh, Tamil Nadu or South India are concerned, we will be having rains only for three months in a year. And we will be having a <coughs> temperature of more than 35 degrees centigrade for about six months in a year. And we will be having a temperature of less than 15 to 17 for three months. That is our winter period. So the all the trees are put into a hardship. So we have to plan for a moisture conservation technologies and we have to irrigate during the drought and summer period. So next press slide, please. Sir. Okay. Uh, these are some small uh, places where we can uh, promote uh, tree uh, planting by the communities. And on the, the top left hand side, it is roadside plantations. We have uh, national highways where we have some legal controls and all. And we also have some secondary and tertiary root system that connects the urban area to the local area where it offers a good opportunity for us to plant trees. And we will be selecting that uh, tree species which tolerates the drought condition, hardships, and according to the soil and water availability. And also we will be considering some economical returns for the local community. Uh, for example, the road size of the rural area, here we call it as Pachai, the uh, government controlling, a government committee that controls the elected uh, people's representatives that can control a village is called as panchayat. So we used to call it as a panchayat plants and other opportunities. We will be planting these trees so that through leasing, the panchayats get some economical return which can be used in the development of villages and also the people who get the lease from the forest trees can also have some economic gain by collecting and selling the important producers and the figure, the image shows a tree species called Tamaritus indica, which is a very good, uh, it yields fruits used in the cooking process of our South Indian dishes. 
on the top right it's a tank bed plantations we have very good plants a smaller farm pond to massive uh, 150 to 100 acres covering a very big great tanks in those areas we will be trying to plant trees that gives a shade and also which has some fruits and all for the birds and animals here we won't consider any economical returns from the tank bed and also the uh, the bottom left left hand side photo shows the plantation in community lands which is uncultivable and waste lands controlled by the village administration so there we will go for some trees which have some economic returns and be suitable for that particular situation the top uh, right uh, top left photo is having a red soil so tamarind is coming well but in the bottom a left hand side it is a clay soil clay rich soil black in color where uh, the neem performs better which has uh, some good returns to uh, our community and the, on the right hand side bottom if you know that the backyard uh, side of the home can be planted with some uh, fruits uh, from fruit seedlings and vegetables so next slide please sir. Yeah, uh, I like to talk about some of this COVID-19 now, uh, which has uh, a greater effect this century to all of us. And it has given uh, many lessons how to live and all. Uh, so what we thought is the main uh, basic thing a person should have for a healthy living is to have a good immunity system. In India, the people loves to have more uh, medicines when they have got ailments and they a uh, little bit bothered about their immunity development, but this COVID-19 has taught them that how important the immunity is for uh, developing the immunity. Uh, we have selected uh, some important uh, trees which can give our prosperous I am zinc and, uh, uh, and uh, vitamin C and all so that it can enhance uh, the immunity of the people. So. These trees we have included in the uh, homestead gardens. The people can grow. These are not very big trees. It's a very, very small trees that can give the returns within one and a half to two years through development of varieties by the research institutes. And the number one is a Goa. I think uh, if you like it, if you taste for once, you'll be allowed to have it. It's a very tasty fruit. Been a very good uh, rich in potassium and all and the second one is on the right top it is a drumstick uh, it's a miracle tree planted uh, very often in our uh, area it is a very, very frequently it is seen in every house its leaves is a very good uh, for uh, iron vitamin c fiber and all so this plant is called as miracle tree because it is supposed to have uh, 12, 12 uh, different antigens that can fight and promote, uh, that can fight against this uh, radicals in the body and promote the immunity. On the bottom left hand side is a small plant, which is a small tree also, it is called as curry leaf. Every South Indian home will have this curry leaf in their preparation. <coughs> For example, in all, it is called as curry leaf. Uh, Moringa Kwenengi is the botanical name. It is very rich in iron and zinc. Very rich in iron and zinc, which forms the basis for promoting the immunity. And the top, uh, sorry, bottom right hand side plant, it's called as Indian gooseberry. Wonderful source for the vitamin C. So these four plants we selected for the nutrient content and we are promoting it for the uh, homestead gardens for promoting nutritional security, very, very important for this COVID-19 era. It's going to continue because the COVID-19 has taught us how important this COVID-19 this immunity is. So as far as we are concerned, we want to promote this nutrient rich and uh, for promoting the immunity to humankind. Next slide, sir. Okay, sorry, but this will have to be the last slide because we're running out of time. 
Okay, ma'am. Okay, just for two slides, I will show. And I will okay, 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 okay. Two more then. <laughs> yeah, just two more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This You're welcome. <laughs> uh, this I told you. This non-wood forest producers, they will uh, the people living around the forest are collecting the produces other than wood from the forest, and they are selling it to people. So we have some scientific technology intervention uh, to have a scientific based collection of the produces and we are also providing training to the forest officials also about how the forest is important to the people and how the peoples are important to the forest for protection these are the newly emerging uh, forest officials of higher grade so as an uh, first uh, agriculture center and a forest specialist i am involved in developing the uh, technical person technical uh, aspects of this nano forest product collection and also creating awareness to the hierarchy about the importance of uh, people's participation in forest protection so next one more slide only one slide uh, then on is community involvement in uh, protection of the community forest uh, sorry conventional forest natural forest we used to call it as joint forest management program implemented by NGOs and also by the government. And the, in the program, we will form one committee called Forest Village Forest Committee. This committee will be responsible for the protection of the forest, especially for theft, animal killing, and also for putting up the forest fires and all. We will be engaging this village foresters. For that, uh, as a return, the forest committee members can arrange for collection of products from the forest to enhance the livelihood by earning economic returns. Uh, thank you. I think this is the last slide I want to share. And sorry for taking much time of you. I'm ready for the discussion. Thank you so much. That was a most inspiring and, and very informative talk. We really appreciate you Thank coming you. and, and sharing this with us. And uh, I think it's given giving people a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll have a Thank discussion. You. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Um, OK, so we, we will now move to the uh, next speakers. Yeah. And uh, thank you again, Mr. Saravanan. Uh, we give yeah. you a big, big round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so now we are going to move on to uh, Veronica Kish and Agnes Zolyumi, uh, founded Ecosystems Evaluation, a comfort consultancy organization, uh, which provides ecosystem evaluation services, as well as strategy and policy advice. And uh, Veronica is doing PhD studies in environmental economics, which is very interesting to us. And uh, Agnes is an expert in ecosystems, green e infrastructure and nature-based solutions. So we're looking forward to hearing from you. And I believe you're going to share your screen with a presentation. Yes, correct. Yeah, I hope it's presenting now. Yeah, clear. Okay, thanks so much for uh, for being here this afternoon, and thank you for allowing us to have this uh, brief presentation on ecosystem services and trees and some experience we've had mostly in Hungary about how to measure ecosystem services. So I'm Agnes and with Veronica, we're going to show you some ideas about that later on. So just a few words about why we're talking. And uh, no, that's uh, not my colleague uh, on the left, but her daughter who is preparing to plant trees uh, provided by Green Dependent because we are working together with them to uh, compensate our massive carbon footprint we had last year before, of course, before COVID. And as, a, as it was mentioned, we are also working for over 15 years with biodiversity and ecosystem services. Uh, first with the conservation NGOs and then we went to academia. And then we started our small uh, 
a consultancy firm ecosystem evaluation where we do ecosystem services assessments. But not to bore you with that any further, a basically our most important question is now is what are exactly ecosystem services? And we've heard a lot about them before in the other two presentations. So maybe just some background on the concept of that. So in the 1990s, a couple of scientists uh, decided that, hmm, wait a minute, this nature thing is not really working. Policymakers are not really focusing on biodiversity and nature. They don't really care about birds and trees. So how about we put it in different perspective and, and focus very much on, on people perspective. Hence this idea of ecosystem services uh, was born and basically it means the benefits we receive from nature. And, and after this concept just spread it around and then it's the UN and its various big organizations, the European Union, they all used it in their, in their conservation policies and other policies. So it's pretty widespread now and in certain projects, say the LIFE project, I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but it's the nature conservation projects of the European Union and for by now they are like uh, expire, uh, expecting everyone to have this kind of ecosystem services assessment. So it's a, it's a compulsory thing now. So it's, it's getting picked up slowly and shortly by certain policies. So basically these ecosystem services are, can be grouped in three different uh, groups or, uh, or categories, which we can see on the screen. So the first one is the provisioning and supplying services which basically what we directly consume or use, such as food, such as wood, medicine, uh, fibers. The second category is the regulating services that we don't directly use, but they basically enable all of the other ecosystem services. And they, they are basically providing all the, all the cycles and cycles uh, in, in the environment, in the world. So these are such as the climate regulation, water cycles, nutrient cycles, soil cycles, in any kind of cycles that, that uh, are the basis of any natural processes. The cultural services, we've already heard a lot about it in the previous presentation, so I'm not going to go too much details in that. Basically recreation, I kind of spiritual, like any kind of cultural connection with nature is included in this third group. But, what about trees specifically? So I guess, uh, as we've heard before, and then I guess we all like to breathe. So oxygen is pretty much one of the basics that, derive, that is derived from, from trees and, and from plants. And, uh, and of course, the carbon dioxide uh, cycle, which is very closely related to it. And of course, it's not just that uh, when we think about on the grandiose large scale, scale providing climate regulation globally, but also locally, because they, you know, if, uh, if it's like super hot, we don't really like to be in the concrete road. We really like to go and find a tree to enjoy the shade. So it provides uh, microclimatic uh, uh, changes. And it's not only with temperature and the shade, but also with evapor evaporation, transpiration systems. So it's really important from the climatic uh, point of view. And of course, it's not only just one tree as per se, it's, it's a small microhabitat biodiversity, of course, is very important. We don't just look at a tree, but we also see birds in bogs or squirrels, mammals on it. So they provide habitat home for various kinds of species, which is important uh, from various perspectives, from ecosystem perspective, and from also from our cultural perspectives. And we've heard about a lot about how trees and nature reduces stress, especially we, we could experience it in this COVID era, but when we were not allowed to go outside and enjoy nature. And, uh, you know, it was really horrible if you're in an urban uh, environment and then you look outside and all you see is like concrete. So we, we sort of aspire to, to in, in need to see nature and trees. And of course, this is... Uh, this is why we also like go outside and have a, have a bike day or, or walk around trees. So they, they also provide the recreational and aesthetic uh, experience as well. And of course, it's not only just nice and practical and we have a sense of belonging to them, but also they help us, for instance, reducing floods or uh, if you are next to mountain areas, it's really helpful 
to stop avalanches, to reach, for instance, uh, habitat areas. And from another socio-economic uh, perspective, it's uh, especially, I guess, in, in, the, in maybe United States and in Europe or Canada or, or like other places, or maybe also in India, I wouldn't know. But it's, uh, it's really important if, if you have a flat, for instance, a, or an, any kind of property, when it looks at forests or, or nature, uh, it has a really much higher prices. So it's good to think about also from that economic perspective. To put more in a more urban background in a, in a bit of a larger context, so forests, forest, urban forests, trees, they also help producing uh, smog and in any kind of uh, other uh, um, you know, env environmental damage that's coming from cars or, uh, or other damages. And then how, the, how you could see the picture, it, picture it just helps uh, uh, providing various well-being when you cannot go outside, for instance, in other natural areas, you can go to a park uh, and do recreation activities there. And of course, it's also if you if you're if you're in an urban setting and, and there's really hot and we could experience that with climate change, it's really uh, getting heat, these heat island effects. Uh, various uh, green infrastructure elements could really help reduce that on top of other cultural and social benefits. So apart, uh, so some examples finally, so we could get into the practice bit. So in the first picture, you could see a it's in Italy, in Milan. It's called the Bosco Verticale, which is basically two high-rise buildings and with forests, as you can see in the picture. And I saw many like various uh, broadcasts about it and people were just so amazed by that. They could live in this building and they look at the city center of Milan while actually living in an urban forest. So I thought that's pretty amazing. And it's a high-rise building of over 110 meters and having 70, over 70 trees, 700 trees, sorry. My, my other and my favorite example is Singapore because that's uh, in the middle of, uh, that's in the, in the middle. So be, I love walking in Singapore and I just love the city because it's uh, half of the area of metropolitan London with almost 6 million people on it. And they are really like danced and packed together but everywhere you go, you just see greens and trees. And they have a really nice policy that when you, when you build new land, you have to compensate the trees and the green areas of that surface. So in this case, they, it can be done vertically, but they also make sure they designate a large area of the island is like natural areas and forests. And the last example is coming from the UK from Glasgow, because uh, I, I wanted to share it with you because it's a very well uh, evidenced case of how much socioeconomic benefits you can have if you invest in green areas. So that's the, which we can see on the satellite, it's uh, Glasgow Green. And the government decided a couple of uh, years ago that they invest a large amount of money into it. And uh, they received 47% uh, percent of their tax revenues back. They had a t a, that much increase and uh, it was a deprived area, area before. So they reconstructed it. So now it's like a lot of other benefits, social and health benefits as well, on top of the increase on, of jobs and tax revenues and the increase of the properties. So these are some practical examples and I will pass it on to my colleague who will talk about more what our experience is in Hungary. Thank you very much. So I, I am going uh, to be very short and briefly talk about our Hungarian related experience, how, how we measure the um, cigarette festival impacts on the natural environment, as well as oak forest related ecosystem services and their measurement, how we carried them out. And last but not least, I will talk shortly about hunting as one of the ecosystem services provided uh, by Woods. Next slide, please. Okay, re in regards to the Siget Festival, can you go back one slide, please? Um, 
um, we prepared our analyses, uh, which consisted of four parts. Uh, the, we measured the, the change in the woody vegetation on the Obuda Island, where the Siget Festival usually takes place. Uh, we we uh, observed birds, uh, their occurrence and the numbers uh, before and after the festival took place. And then we provided for the Siget Festival team some best practices, how other festivals tackle their, uh, their impact on their natural environment. And last but not least, we, we provided some recommendations to the Siget Festival, how they can uh, mitigate their impact. So next, please, uh, in regards to the woody vegetation, we carried out our measurement using satellite images uh, for eight years. Uh, based on, on the images, we didn't, um, we didn't discover any significant change in the tree, uh, tree cover of the Opud Island. Uh, we think that it can be attributed to the fact that the, the Siget Festival team pay significant attention uh, to monitor uh, the tree degradation on the island and manage uh, the tree replantation significantly. Next slide, please. Uh, in regards to birds, uh, we, we managed to observe common, but also some rare species on, on, the, on the island, both before and after the festival took place. Uh, we also didn't discover any significant change uh, before and after the event, and and we uh, thought that it it can be attributed that in August, where usually the Siget Festival takes place, um, the youngsters are already hatched, and the migratory bird species are already left the island. So, in regards to our recommendation. Uh, we put more emphasis uh, not on the woody vegetation but, uh, but rather on the soil because the festival really damages the soil and we recommended other, other areas to improve. Okay, next please. So I, I talked briefly about oak forests related ecosystem services. Agnes mentioned the so-called life project by the European Commission where they uh, campus already uh, have to prepare uh, ecosystem services related assessment at the um, beginning and also at the end of the project phase. So we prepared a baseline assessment for a six year long life project. And um, the aim of this assessment is that, that its results can be compared to the results at the end of the project uh, phase where project-related activities, in our case, these activities are natural forest management practices. These activities are uh, already applied and their impacts are already felt on the, on the project areas. We, we chose uh, among the ecosystem services, biomass from the provisioning services, because it has uh, an effect on other services other uh, regulating and maintenance services. And regarding regulating services, we chose carbon sequestration because forests play a crucial role in, uh, in absorbing carbon. And besides the, them, uh, we, we measured pest control and the habitat maintenance of the forest because they play a significant role in maintaining biodiversity and also for forest resilience. Next, please. Uh, we, we received our data uh, in regards to the forest stem structure and characteristics, including microhabitats and also the number and the abundance of the pest predators. As, uh, as our result shows, bio, biomass and also the carbon uh, sequestration capacity of the project areas are above the national Hungarian average. So we can, uh, we can say that uh, these are in good conditions comparing to the other parts of Hungary and also the other two ecosystem services, the habitat maintenance and the pest, uh, pest control capacity are also in good uh, quality 
and the latter two are very much uh, linked to the dead wood amount of the forest. So, um, so it can be said that the dead wood uh, significantly influence the microhabitat and also the pest control capacity of the, of the forest. Next, please. Last but not least, let me uh, uh, explain uh, briefly how we measured hunting and uh, game management practices as uh, one of the ecosystem services uh, can be provided by forest in uh, Northeast Hungary, where a motorway section is being planned. Uh, we, we used in our analysis the so-called market price method for evaluating these ecosystem services because uh, hunting related activities, including the game meat as a market where they can be sold. We collected our data through desktop research and also interviewing uh, game managers uh, at uh, the so-called game management units where, because in Hungary, hunting is managed by this kind of organizations. And we validated our results uh, by focus groups. Next please, and this is my last slide. <clears throat> so we, um, in our measurement, we found that game population in the concerned area are in good quality and their population are sustainable. We also measured the revenues and the costs in relation to the game management. In the revenues, we, we uh, we collected data, for instance, uh, membership fee paid to the game management units or also the, the, the payment uh, after the trophies, which collected by also the game management units. Under cost, we considered equipment which, should, which are necessary to manage uh, uh, game and hunting activities in the region. And from this, we also touched upon the profit, how uh, game management units uh, benefit from managing uh, hunting activities. And according to our interviewees, they said that this profit is growing steadily but slowly in, in this region. Um, so the highway threatens this ecosystem services and also uh, this kind of uh, activity and because it, it most probably will have a detrimental effect on the game population. So therefore we, we recommended strict mitigation measures in order to, to maintain uh, the game management activity in the region. So uh, this was a, a short presentation about our Hungarian related experience. Next slide, please. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, we have some minutes to be asked. <laughs> and yes, we can we can be approached on these email addresses as well. Thank you so much, um, Veronica and Agnes. That was really really interesting, and uh, it's it's always good to have different examples as well, uh, where you can you know begin to see how how it works. Um, so we, we are, we are a bit behind time, but we, we, if, if that's okay with everybody, we will uh, run over a little bit so that we can have a few questions. Um, perhaps the speakers could put their email in the chat and people can, um, then contact them, uh, it, because some, some people were interested in, in maybe being able to access your slides uh and you obviously you'd have to come to a, an understanding about that um okay so if you thank you very much your speakers could put your e uh, email in the address that's brilliant um okay so could we have any questions please to both uh sets of of talks i know that there was an enormous amount uh, in in them, and I'm sure people have thoughts. We have a lot of interesting points in the chat, but I don't really have any any uh, questions in the chat as yet. Uh, so I can't actually see everybody. So if you want to ask a question, 
Can you stick it in the chat? Um, let me see if I can get a, a different view. Um, right, here we go. Okay. Okay, so uh, any questions at the moment? Anybody's got? Um, no, <laughs> we're all we're all very appreciative in our chat comments. Um, clearly, our speakers communicated very well, <laughs> and I I think we're beginning to get ideas about how we might share some of the ideas about trees across uh, from different societies. Um, I think one of the things that was really interesting, so let me ask a question of the speakers. I think it was really interesting to see the similarities, some really um, same you. points coming up from Mr. Saravanan and, and uh, Agnes and Veronica. Um, what did you, was there anything you'd like to ask the other presenter? So, uh, Mr. Saravanan. Yeah, oh. yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, it's a very good presentation by uh, Veronica, uh, where I have a knowledge on the oak ecosystem uh, when compared to the natural uh, biodiversity rich ecosystem present in Tamil Nadu. And, uh, uh, I had a good exposure to work uh, specific ecosystem that uh, services and other things have been rendered. And also I am really astonished to know uh, that it has enhanced the population of birds that were the endangered birds. Uh, thank you very much, Veronica. Okay, thank you. I don't think that was a question, that was a comment, which is... <laughs> I think, I um, think maybe... Uh, I think... <laughs> You have quite a lot to say to each other. Um, it would be nice to make a link, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's what we have got the email address. We can hang back, no problems. Yes, I do have one question for you, uh, Mr. Saravanan. Yes. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute. I'll just ask uh, Agnes and uh, Veronica if you had any any thoughts on on our Mr. Saravanan's presentation. Maybe just one thing to mention because uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Sarvan, and for your presentation, of course. That uh, I think we, we didn't stress it in our presentation enough or sufficiently, but uh, so each forest can have lots of ecosystem services, but it's related. It's, there is a direct link with biodiversity and ecosystem services. So we have an issue here, for instance, in Hungary about black locust, Seropinia pseudocacia, which is like, Everybody's planting it because it's a lot of uh, yeah. benefit for the forest managers or for those who plant it. But they provide much less ecosystem services than the natural forests. So I just wanted to make that comment that biodiversity is important, not just the uh, forest trail, the massive uh, scale forester forest. Oh, thank you. Just I want to interact with you. I want to mention that I have concentrated more on the community involved uh, plantations and not on natural. So the services uh, differ according to the community involved. As I told you, uh, the community that is living inside an institution or a company needs more oxygen means we have to go for that type of species. And if I want to select trees for a village uh, site, I want to consider the economic returns of that particular tree among the other social factors. And uh, once for all, uh, I will select which are all uh, um, ecologically acceptable, economically feasible, and uh, socially acceptable species are propagated in this uh, type of plantation that involves the community. So mm -hmm. I cannot speak more about the ecosystem services uh, that are uh, that you have been uh, giving you and your presentation of more plantation. Uh, in similar way, we have uh, more plantations of uh, this peak, uh, Tectona Grandis, which is a uh, hardcore plant uh, that uh, serves the purpose of everything, right from shipbuilding to house building. Uh, we have the problem of uh, heavy pest infestation and also uh, we lost many bird species in that uh, huge plantation area running to hundreds of acres. So our entire uh, government has stopped planting of uh, 
this type of monocropping in the conventional forest area. So right. we are promoting that type of trees in the non-conventional forest areas. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have a question. Uh, this is a, a, a good question for about COP26. So the big climate summit that's coming up, uh, which uh, we hope will, will be in Glasgow. Uh, we're not sure um, what, what's going to happen with the COVID and then maybe it will need to be postponed again a bit, but it's very important uh, climate summit. What, what would our speakers like to come out from the climate summit um, in support of trees and forests? I think that's quite a difficult one. <laughs> shall I shall I ask uh, Veronica and Agnes about that? What do you think could they could be something that could we could you know lobby for in, at COP twenty six? I think unless Veronica wants to jump in, a my me personally, <laughs> I think there's a lot of focus on the technical parts and the technical solutions. You know, I think it's uh, not that much focus on nature based solutions. A, basically, which is uh, trees. So, yeah, I would really like to see more focus in understanding and supporting natural systems and trees and forests, or wetlands or whatever, just not focusing on technicalities. Mm. Yes, did, did you want to add anything to that, Veronica? No, I, I agree, but I, it, it, it is valid to all other international forum and negotiations that we are waiting for something to happen i know yes i know uh, um, <laughs> i want to add one thing yeah. what do you think yeah mm. <clears throat> actually you are addressing this climate change and other things and this is the international year of fruits and vegetables to address the nutritional security to everybody as it is declared as an international year of fruits and vegetables by food and agriculture organization. Uh, this type of uh, hardy plant that gives nutrient rich fruits can also be included right. uh, by right. your uh, topic. And, uh, because the third countries, which are uh, neglecting the importance of nutrients, is very important for that type of uh, humans. Thank you very much for that, because I think you. a lot of people think that, uh, you know, uh, also that um, climate, uh, um, forest cover, etc. is very important, but they don't understand the importance of perhaps smaller species that, that you're mentioning also have a link to nutritional um, benefits. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so... Uh, we did have and one more question for you, Mr. Saravanan. Yeah. Um, is it so? The question is: uh, Is India a good a good country for tree planting, partly because of yeah. the spiritual beliefs and yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that is our strength. Mm. Actually, the spiritual and devotional belief is a very good uh, strength for the promoting tree planting. Mm. And all the rituals and all the functions from the time of birth to the death, we depend on different types of trees. Yeah. So that is the strength of uh, India. And, uh, in, in addition to this point, uh, India is blessed with varied agroclimatic conditions. So right from the temperate zone to warmer, I mean, the hottest place uh, on earth, you know, all the uh, varied climate conditions are available in India. So this is the best place to go for tree plantation. And uh, as uh, my colleague uh, Mr. Ronan pointed out, people are very much uh, uh, attached with the trees because right from the birth to the death, uh, we are very much linked with the trees. So it's the best place to go for tree plantation in a massive way. Yeah, I think, I think you're more tree literate than we are. I think you know, <laughs> your societies have a tree consciousness, which uh, we we need to work to develop. And that's yeah. one of our questions uh, tomorrow: is how can we become more tree conscious? Yes, and yes. Uh, it is, I guess that's uh, 
uh, a message for mostly for for countries that don't understand so much uh, the deep spiritual and practical and um, and you know other health benefits of trees. Uh, okay, well I think we should probably close for today. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I know there are many more things that that uh, we want to say, and we hope to see you all tomorrow. I hope maybe. Mr. Saravanan, you might come and join us again tomorrow if you have the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely I'll come. It would be very nice to see you and uh, and also Agnes and Veronica, but can we give our speakers a round of applause? And Ian, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. So we really look forward to seeing you all tomorrow yeah but, uh, at the same time yeah okay yeah, yeah. thanks jen okay bye bye now bye. Um, uh, take care bye, bye take care can i just say that the program the program is on the helm site i meant to put it in the chat but right. oh yes uh, basically we'll be hearing about the tree planting tomorrow yeah. uh, and we'll also have an opportunity to discuss about how we can become more tree conscious those are the oh. items for tomorrow Okay, bye-bye, everyone. Thank, Thank bye, you, Janet, for you keeping time. us on yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye-bye now. Bye-bye, everybody. I should be last because I'm recording everything. I, think I can probably stop recording now, can't I? Yeah. <laughs>